Bowles Australia acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the land in which this stream is produced. We pay our respects to all First Nations people and acknowledge Elders past and present. Week two is well and truly upon us here at the World Bowls Championships on the Gold Coast. It was a wonderful weekend at Club Hallensvale that saw seven disciplines crowned with gold medalists and we couldn't look, be, be looking forward to the second week much more. This morning is women's pairs actions, uh, action as the w revert... As the disciplines reverse, how am I going this morning? Val Febo here with you, with Barry Lester joining me. Baz, great to have your company. I probably had a bit of a false start there, but uh, great to have you and you can carry me through this. Mate, too much downtime for you. Too much uh, retail therapy over there at uh, Pacific Fair, mate. Um, <laughs> all that spending, all that big dollars yeah. Oh, yeah. Have, has thrown you a touch. No, great to see you again, Val, and great to be back with the team and, and with everyone around the world. Once again, let's hear where you're watching from today. We're at Musgrave Hill Bowling Club, uh, slightly west of the coast. And a uh, beautiful clubhouse here, three lo lovely greens, and it's good to be back after a couple of days of rest. It certainly is, and we've got uh, a non-Australian match for you this morning. It's Ashley Rainey and Sarah Kelly of Ireland against Guernsey's Rose Ogier and Lucy Beer. So very much looking forward to this one. Ireland, of course, a gold medal winning nation over the weekend with Gary Kelly and Adam McEwen taking home the men's pairs. Can the women make it a pairs double for the Irish? Who knows? But looking forward to this one, and we know the pedigree that the, uh, the Guernsey bowlers have. Lucy Beer, of course, one of only two lawn bowls uh, medalists at the Commonwealth Games for the uh, the Island Nation and Sarah Kelly and Ashley Rainey, very very handy players and Rose Oja as well. Yeah, no doubt, very accomplished players and uh, they're playing in the east west direction this morning. So for those that aren't familiar with the Gold Coast or Musgrave Hill Bowling Club, it comes back to pretty much the the preference of the greenkeepers or the all the staff, what direction they want to play first thing in the morning. The main priority is that they're not looking at into the sun at the point of release. And uh, we're in for a stinker today, Val. 27 degrees. That sounds very, very good. As long as there's no wind, I am happy. Not and sure about that. We're yeah. already seeing the flags uh, <laughs> flicking around a bit. Uh, they're coming in from the north. Usually we get a bit of a northwester with that heat. So uh, already at 21 degrees so early in the morning. So hello to my... Victorian friends down there and a nice balmy seven degrees this morning. Um, yeah, wishing you were here, but uh, hopefully you're tuning in and um, welcome to everyone all around the world. This will be a, a great day of play. Looking forward to all three matches. Certainly will. And of course, the, the pedigree on this green is uh, is very, very high. And Lucy Biet almost conquered the Commonwealth Games last year in the women's singles, making it through to the final against Alan Ryan. She actually beat Alan Ryan en route to the final in the sectional rounds. And um, we know what she has achieved. And both of these two played in the pairs at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham last year and missed out on getting through the sectional uh, rounds as the Hooter goes off to commence play this morning. Yeah, 18, uh, sorry, yeah, 18 end match uh, for the women's pairs and... Got some other games going on around this match. Um, so we've got the, the mix of disciplines. The men have now moved into the singles and fours. So we've got the Aussies playing next door. I'm glad um, you got that out a little bit better than I did in yeah. the intro this morning, Baz. So I'm, I'm uh, yeah, I'm I'm coming off a day's rest too, mate. We uh, we had a great storm yesterday. It was fantastic to see a bit of rain. I think it was perfect for this event. Personally, I think. Uh, New new event. Um, this World Bowls does run over two weeks, but for me, it really is a, a start of a new event for these athletes. And the conditions have changed, so it might just see that play into certain players' hands and teams' hands. But all all teams would be right across the conditioning. Most of them, I would have thought, went out would have went out and had a bit of a warm up after yesterday's downpour. I reckon they definitely would have just to get it, just to get their handle on the conditions. Now, Ashley Rainey. Sending her first bowl down and Rose Ogier from Guernsey. She is, Baz, a, um, a legal assistant with a broad knowledge of Guernsey probate applications. Working at Collis Krill up there. Yeah, 
good to see both players wearing uh, some green and gold shoes. I know their their uh, uniforms have got a bit of green in them, but yeah, great to see a bit of bit of colour in the footwear. It's, Why not uh, represent where you are? Yeah, it's um, it's one of those parts of the game now. We're seeing more and more of these beautiful coloured outfits, but footwear, the the equipment. I still remember when I first saw my first set of coloured bowls back in two thousand. How and excited did you get? Yeah, I was 17 years of age. I was a kid in a candy store. I was at St. John's Park Bowling Club in New South Wales. We were playing a junior series. And uh, a couple of the biggest names of the sport, Steve Glasson and Adam Jeffries, were rolling on up on the green next door. Not only was I starstruck, but I was um, absolutely blown away. I saw coloured bowls. So, And Ben Glasson then, Steve's son, mm-hmm. was about three years of age running up and down the green as well. And uh, here we are now. We've gone, come a long way when it comes to colour, not only in the bowls but the uniforms and and everything else that comes with it. It's great to see. It's great. It is certainly fantastic as the skips will make their way down. Ireland in the blue, Guernsey in the red. Both of the Guernsey exponents, they'll be using Taylor SRs. Lucy was saying this morning that uh, hopefully we don't mic her up because <laughs> she can say or tend to say a few choice words under her breath. Yeah, um, which big personality yeah. is Lucy. Um, no, she's fantastic. And uh, last year at the Commonwealth Games, as I said, it was such a wonderful run for her. And she joined just Jenny Nicole and Mary and Marie Smith as the only medalists in bowls from Guernsey as she sits that bowl out and takes shot. Yeah, what a shot that was. Um, knowing that the respots in play, you could see Lucy there just go, well, I'm keen enough to give this six or eight feet just to sit and arrive. And that is the conditions at the moment, Val. We're going to see a bit of that, a bit of crash and bash early on while the green's got a bit of moisture in it and the bowls are sitting down a touch. You can see there quite a strong shadow on the bowl from the the, uh, the early morning conditions. But you'll, note, you'll notice versus the, the games a couple of days ago at Helensville how low the bowls are sitting down into that softer grass. Certainly are, and Sarah Kelly from the Crumblin Bowling Club, and Ashley Rainey from Yurts. Sarah on the charge here, looking to disturb this. She's very close here. Any connection? Jack Clean. Well, bowl clean. Bowl Opened clean. it up. Still one for Guernsey. One more left for each. Eighteen ends is what we're playing to. And unlike the weekend and Friday, it's all timed and we will play out the full allotments of ends because shots up do matter. We're back in the sectional rounds as Lucy Beer tries to crash in. Yeah, just a great sign for Lucy there, just showing her experience. Plenty of uh, body language up and down the green. You can see there. Love, I absolutely love seeing the uh, communication between some of these nations. It's can lead to great performance, uh, especially if you're a little bit nervy early on. New discipline, new week, you know, you're looking to get off to a good start. If there's any jitters or nerves there, they're always great to play in a team event if you get some uh, get some voice going. We get to see some jack movement here. Yes. We'll just let you know what the outcome is. That's worked out all right. Well, not quite all right, actually. Just giving the shot away there. We'll soon find out how many... So two it is to Jersey, I think, yep. Green speed, about 13 and a half seconds. I suspect that will free up a touch once that surface moisture comes away. Um, quite often when the green has had a bit of moisture in it and it is a warm day, the green keepers will be out there rolling between sessions just to lift that moisture right out of it. So we'll, we'll keep you up to date with the conditions as they change. So, Barry Lester, Australia, after the first weekend, they lead the medal tally. Three gold medals coming from the seven disciplines. It's a very even weekend amongst a lot of the nations. South Africa, very, very close to having two gold medals of their own in both of those para-disciplines. The vision impaired, which was an epic Jake Falberg and Jackie Hudson getting the job done. How good is that para overall trophy, Val? It's great to see um, some reward for effort for overall performances. Um, uh, just reminder to all our viewers that there are individual 
Trophies up for grads, grabs, of course. The singles, pairs, triples and fours. The discipline awards, but there's overall trophies that the countries are vying for as well. Yeah, it was great to see our para Jackaroos hoist that trophy. Well and truly deserved. Absolutely sensational people. 3-0 so far in favour of Guernsey. So a very good start for the island nation. Just going to miss under here is Ashley. She needs some connection. So we're just having a brief problem with our live scoring. So we'll keep bringing in updates. But two bowls jack high from the Guernsey bowlers at the moment. So Rose Ogier started things very well. This one is motoring along. That's going to go. Rocking. Yeah, that's the conditions winning there, Val. So the flags are going from left to right. Yep. And funny enough, every bowl other than one bowl, well, sorry, other than one bowl delivered so far have been affected by that, either ripping right across the head or being held out. So the players will be wary of that. This one falling short. So Ashley there just throwing a couple of pathfinders down. Found it with her last, so that's encouraging. And they'll take a bit of time to get used to. I missed the announcement this morning about the green speed. Yeah, but four, four, just short of 14 seconds. Yeah. A lot of colour this morning. Feels like it. Yesterday that we were starting this tournament off last week at Broadbeach. Now we're well and truly into it. Seven disciplines have been decided. And Lucy Beer, she looks pretty close here. Yeah. And she'll follow it in. Lovely shot. She's got her weight control already, Lucy. She's a very, very good bowler. We know that. As we see Sarah Kelly on the mat, backhand. Needs some connection, just going through a touch. Tough section for Lucy Beer in the singles. Had Kelly McCarrahan, who ended up going down in the final, and Colleen Piketh, the Commonwealth Games gold medalist. She was just out by a win. A little bit of shot difference as well. Lossolini Decoya in third and Lucy in fourth. So a bit of a difficult section to fight her way out of there, Lucy Beer, but she'll be out for revenge in the in the single or in the pairs. Yeah, Lucy, yeah, forehand, backhand. So showing her versatility here. Um probably the main reason for her changing hands was just not to set anything up for her opposition. So currently Guernsey holding two. It's not a mile away. Great track. Needs to hurry. Uh, yep. uh, close. Certainly would be. We do apologise. They're not used to being streamed here, so we'll try and get them to jump off the centre line if we can. Yeah, interesting shot this one because so it's important here. Uh, there's a, those front bowls out there at sort of two o'clock that are away for for Ireland here, and obviously the the jack is the objective here to try and get close to the jack, but you also try and play to the area here. If you try and try and nail the jack. That can bring the front blue into play as well. But you try and may even just create a little area to play to and instead of just specifically to the jack. Because if you look at the jack, can how's, neglect a few other things. How's her weight here, Sarah Kelly? Will it get a little slide? She falls in. She might have just secured shot there. Very close, Val. It is. One to Guernsey. So, 4-0 to start proceedings here for Ogier and Beer.
Very good start for the Island Nation. Located close to Jersey. Very close to France, actually, if you look at the geography of it all. Much closer to France than the British mainland, who they affiliate themselves with. Looks like a beautiful part of the world, this Guernsey, and that's where the World Bowls Indoor Championships will be next year. Of course, Australia will have three people going over. Aaron Sheriff will be going over as the defending champion. Ray Pierce and Samantha Atkinson after the latter two took home the Australian Indoor Championships just a few weeks ago, which you and I were at, Barry. Yeah, the Australian Indoor, we've touched on it plenty of times, Val. Such a prestigious event, and we mentioned uh, quite a lot throughout the event how easy it is to enter to try and qualify and to get to, to Tweed Heads. And then from there, once you're in that main draw, well, anything is possible. We have seen players make a name for themselves out of nowhere, and we've seen big names really cement themselves in the big events. But I love the event for that real ma main purpose, the fact that you could be a... A bowler, as I've mentioned, at the middle of nowhere in back of Queensland or WA or anywhere, you just put your name down to qualify, and if you get up to Tweed Heads, you never know. I love the Australian Indoor Singles. Such a great event, and yep. what better venue to be held at than Tweed Heads Bowls Club. And I think this year shows that maybe, just maybe, book your flights on the Friday. Believe in yourself. Because oh. we know that uh, we know that Darren Gordon he was going to head off home for work commitments, but he ended up making the final. Yeah, I think uh, I think so. I think um, you know if you're a, if you're looking to get away for a week and have a holiday, um, and you know why not try and use your indoor qualifying as a holiday? Now, if you if you don't actually qualify, go up for the week anyway. Plenty to see and do on the Gold Coast while the indoor is on. Um, and if you happen to qualify, well. You get a few expenses covered at the same time, so no harm in qualifying. Usually done over one weekend, so it's not a bad reward for a weekend of bowls. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. Trip up to, as you said, the glorious club Tweed, which I tell he's doing a wonderful job there, and they are a juggernaut. Their team as well. They've got a wonderful array of bowlers and a world champion now in Damien Delgado. That's right. And After... What a match that was on Sunday. Shot for shot, barely any multiples. Unbelievable. Yeah, probably for me uh, and probably for a lot of people really, um, I think that was the game, game of the tournament so far, the match of the tournament. The amount of messages I had from people just saying they could watch that game on replay uh, or they couldn't get enough of it was unbelievable. People just sending me messages saying, Barry, how good is it? And I wasn't even involved. So imagine how the players went with their inboxes and I uh, I would expect the Taylor Bruces and many other players um, that have come away with a world title or featuring in some of these big games, their uh, inboxes in terms of text and Facebook and so on, they wouldn't be able to keep up, and that's the support these players are receiving. We see it at Clubland Val, don't we? You know, we see everyone walking up to them and wishing them well and saying good luck and well done, and and it's uh, such a great part of this sport of lawn bowls that you can come and watch the world's best for free, grab a seat, and then actually go and interact with the players. It's such a great event for that. It certainly is. It's Lucy Beer. Dogs down the green. She has found her weight control early, Barry Lester. She's looking very good. Setting up a couple already for Guernsey as they want to take a stranglehold on this one early. Yeah, set it in very well as Lucy Beer. Yeah, Jenny will uh, we'll try and get a message out to Rose that she's just in front of the camera. Obviously, they wouldn't be used to this sort of live streaming, so... And that's and that's right, Val. If you throw in uh, if you throw in um, COVID times, you know live streaming hasn't really been around that long, and players, um, especially in some countries, aren't used to or have not played on live streaming. So we can uh, we'll we'll try and control what we can control, but just uh, please understand that the players are vying for a world title. Their heads are in the game, and some of the externals, e.g., cameras and so on, 
not in the forefront, but we'll do our best to um, to negotiate that. We will. And Lucy Beer currently holding a couple. They're looking to put the pressure on the Irish early. Nice smooth delivery there from Lucy. One thing Lucy does, which I really like about her delivery, is she really does keep her arm clear of her body, keeps her, her knees, hips out of the way. She's nice, nice swing and uh, really good technique. Really good technique for all conditions, has Lucy. But uh, the beauty I really do like is the fact that that nice, strong pendulum, everything's clear, no... Uh, no uh, negotiating any part of her body, and she gets the reward. She's been a quality player for many years, and you'll see with a lot of these players, as much as their deliveries are all different, a lot of them have all the correct fundamentals when it comes to balance and timing and tempo and, and, and their techniques. We'll stand them up in good stead throughout big matches and big tournaments like this. Sarah Kelly... This is a massive bowl already in the context of this, and you don't want to get off to the worst possible start. And this one's going to miss high, but there might be a little rub or a slide. And how that hasn't crashed into more, I'm not so sure. But that is two. And Guernsey have started this one like a house on fire. 6-0 after three, Baz. Looking very good so far. Yeah, just I, I feel for me it's um it's still anyone's. It's just that uh, a big touch of the jack on the second end from Lucy trailing the jack away there of from Ashley's bowls. Um, you know, it's it's still day one of a new tournament. A couple of days rest for, for quite a number of players. Um, some are playing this venue for the first time. It's a warm day, warm morning, um, so concentration levels need to be up. And preparation, so yeah, it's it's a quite a testing testing morning really, especially coming off a couple of days break. Um, Rosie there, just a, a yard wide, decent decent weight, but Ashley's uh, she's been around about, just needs to start really settling in now, just find a hand and find her groove, and that'll be a, a big uh, component to Ireland getting back in this match, just creating a yep. bit of front front end pressure. It's been all rows so far. Ireland saw some fruits of their labour on the weekend coming out here late last year and then also in the multi-nations to get acclimatised to the green. And Adam McEwen, I think, was playing out at Tweed Heads. Gary Kelly, of course, out at Warilla. And both of them, the pairs champions. And Gary Kelly finally broke the Aaron Wilson duck after losing to him in the 2016 men's pairs final. And then last year in Birmingham, he broke the duck and got that elusive gold medal. Yeah, definitely. There's um, there's some little rivalries that go on. I know that, you know, Aaron and, and Gary have played each other in obviously many other events, e.g. Nuggets and that. But at, at the at the big level, um, at the big big stage, it was definitely one you heard Gary fell after the game say, yeah, he was straight to, pretty quick to mention it, that... Um, he uh, he got one back on Aaron, and <laughs> when you go back twenty or thirty years ago, even further, the uh, the one that I always think of was David Bryant and John Snell. Um, I think they competed against each other in three straight singles majors. I think it was Com Games Worlds, Com Games, or it might have been Worlds, Com Games Worlds. But they uh, they definitely played off in three major singles finals with David Bryant coming away with those three wins, but. Um, John Snell, OAM, Hall of Famer, uh, always tells the story that, um, and this is just <laughs> extending to what you're talking about there, Val, um, John Snell always tells the story that, yeah, they played each other six times in their history uh, in majors, and they were three all. Um, but David coming away with the with the three big wins, but he was pretty happy that he came up against the world's best singles of, player of all time, and and they still got the three wins. So there's those rivalries ongoing for many, many decades now. And, um, yeah, you love to see it. And one of our best local rivalries I can think of was always Calvin Kirko and Steve Glasson. Yeah. yeah, they were best mates, but always had a, had a great rivalry and a friendly rivalry. And, um, yeah, I love hearing those stories. I know growing up as a bowls lover, just a sponge of the game, 
you love to hear those stories and exactly and be um, just be around some of those greats of the game and as we see a really nice shot there from Sarah that's in a great position so the island holding two here with two left for Lucy and it was a good start there from Ashley Rainey that's what set this up Lucy beer though she's not a mile away Lucy beer just going through the gap. Yeah, something, I know that they're holding two here, Ireland, and they're, they're going to be very happy with that, but and they're looking for more because scoreboard pressure would suggest that they need to score more, but there is a small issue developing. And we know Lucy has got a nice weighted game, and that's three down at the tee, so if they don't want to open this up... They haven't, oh. but the target is there. See, Lucy's got this now, this kind of game. She's got this ability to be able to play these shots. Do have all the back bowls here, so big weight from Lucy. Yep. Needs to hold. It's She's probably going to come underneath here, and it won't rub off on anything. So, Ireland have an opportunity here to make a collect with their first score of the match. Obviously, they don't want to go too hard at it. They need this weight control to be perfect here. And Sarah Kelly on a wider line, going to try and settle this one in. And this is looking okay. Just going to drop short, so that is a three. And and that's that front end pressure, Val, we spoke about. Ashley winning that battle, putting two within a foot or 18 inches, and everything just changes from then on in. And We, uh, we spoke about it a few times last week. The front end, they can win you games, no doubt about it. Um, they just change and set up the play and set up everything for you. And, and if a skip is on their game, they can sort of help dictate by how many, but... Um, it's definitely that critical mass, the balls around the head, winning those front-end battles and the players to come after that, being able to play their shots with confidence, especially in this format uh, with the re-spot. So Ireland on the board for the first time, 6-3 in favour of Guernsey. That's a big collect for the Irish just to get themselves into this contest and give themselves a little platform, which they've got now. And that jack is right back, right near the tee. You love to see it, Val. Absolutely love to see it. No chance, no hope, not, I ho you know, I wonder if this will work. Clear game plan. Go long. Let's try and uh, break the Jersey side up because what's happened so far is it's just being outnumber outnumbered. So... If you are being outnumbered, it's just a case of trying to find something that breaks that up. It might be dead minimum, might be maximum, might be jack in, in a really sort of uncommon spot, but you've got to have that game plan well and truly decided before the game. Know what you want to go out with your plan A, and then if things aren't working, go to plan B and see if need be. Just not turning on as much. I'm used to seeing that Club Helensvale turn from the weekend and we saw how they were running on. That was a quick green, wasn't it, Baz? Yeah, we saw some players struggle with the, the quick green at Helensvale. Um, not that they can't play good on those quick greens. It's more so probably that it wasn't something that every player was playing on every day the same. So remembering players are playing on multiple greens at multiple venues and they're not all the same. And that's what makes these world titles so hard to win as opposed to, and I'm not taking anything away from other events, but as opposed to playing on the same rink day in, day out over a couple of weeks in the same conditions versus playing in different wind. We've had storms, we've had rain, we've had lightning, we've had wind, we've had different directions, different venues. So these players are going right through every rigours of the game that presents itself to come away with a world title and then the last component of the championship last week was 18 second greens at Helensvale with wide draw like you say Val so all the players are they're really earning what they have to walk away with and, and that's is all the conditions and I'm sure as much as I'm sometimes would like to be on an indoor somewhere or, yeah. or on a nice calm green somewhere um, you know the saying for me and I know the Australian Jackaroos work heavily in this area and the saying is you've got to just be as comfortable as you can when things are uncomfortable. You do, and <coughs> it's 
that's why players were draped with gold medal had gold medals draped around their necks on Saturday and Sunday. It's never easy to win a World Bowls Championship gold. And they exhibited comfort in uncomfortable and nerve-wracking situations. That's next door, Michael Yacoub. It's next door, Australia against the Philippines in the men's fours. Australia leading 6-2 after three. Remember, you can go to world2023.bowls.com.au. Have a look at all the live scores. Just almost 9 a.m. local time. Sarah Kelly trying to continue Ireland's charge back at this. This might crash into the Lucy Beer Bowl. It does, so Ireland sit and stay for one. Yeah, Lucy here on the charge forehand, looking to open this head up. Can I miss under? It's a bit tight. Will she crash into anything? Mm. Yeah, there's results over there. Yep. No, not and for the better. Nope. That is now one down to two down. Lucy Beer still with one more to come, however. Sarah Kelly. Trying to add in a third and put the pressure on Guernsey here. She's trotting in behind it. And if it stays around weight-wise, gets a little slide. And Sarah Kelly. Also got some news, Baz. Lindsay Clark plays game number 450 in the second session today for Australia. Wow. Matching up four and a half stars <laughs> in a final tournament. Yeah, that's just brilliant. I still remember Lindsay, the first time I saw her wearing all white. And uh, to think that we've come from all white clothes and seeing Lindsay in all white clothes yep. to now the colour and flair that the game presents itself. Um, and those famous pink sunglasses, Baz. <laughs> yeah, she probably had them for nearly 20 years. You're right. So, <coughs> Lucy Beer, <coughs> they're down three, which... If she can't do anything about it, would level the scores. Now she is going to miss here. So this is going to be another triple to the Irish. And all of a sudden, after being 6-0 down after three, they've got back-to-back -back threes. And this high-scoring affair sits at 6-all. That turned out of nowhere, Barry Lester. Yeah, and that's uh, these conditions. They're slightly fluky at the moment. Uh, the flags uh, started mainly sort of from the north, now starting to push from the northwest. And as we see there, Ashley, she's brought the mat up about three or four metres, but that jack's right on the tee. So once again, the closer that jack gets up under the clubhouse, the conditions will change again. So it'll be interesting to see if many bowls run through here as they're trying to push up into the jack. And they get out of the conditions under the clubhouse. So Ashley on the forehand. Nice line. Just needs to run. Well, just a yard of weight. That's, that's pretty good. You want to at least take one key ingredient out of your delivery, and that's right on the line. So only lacking one yard. But it's amazing how quick a game can change, Val. 6-0 to 6-all in a blink of an eye. As New Zealand and uh, Papua, Papua New Guinea on the far rink. Selena Goddard and Caitlin Inch 12-0 after four in the women's pairs. Yeah, Commonwealth Games bronze medalists. Very good start for them. Uh, what a what a moment that was of Birmingham last year. I was right behind Caitlin Inch when she delivered the bowl to, to defeat Wales. It was a trail of the jack to pick up a three and win the match. Uh, and then Selena ran down the green and they were hugging and all that. It was just uh, a moment for me. 
was there was so much going on that morning as well. With yeah, the, um, across with the, the rinks, wow. Yeah, with Chrissy and Alan against Amy and Sophie. And, of course, we're going to be bringing you the rematch of that this week. I believe that's at Club Helens Vale tomorrow. We'll confirm that with you, but last session tomorrow, Club Helens Vale, 2.45 p.m., Christic and Ryan against Tolchard and Farrow. The rematch. And Ashley Rainey. Well, she has taken charge of this lead battle, Barry Lester. And the front end pressure that Rose Ogier was putting on early, well, that has dwindled. Yeah, I think Rose has always been solid throughout this match. But I think for me it was just Ashley having to tighten up things slightly. She's really uh, settled in on one hand. And as you see there, all three bowls right down the middle of the rink. And, and the last one was her best weight. So sometimes that can happen in a game early on. Uh, the conditions are a bit slower than what they were used to last week, you know, with the green around that sort of 13 and a half, 13 second mark. And uh, the bowls are sitting down, so there's not much sharpness in the draw. So it becomes back to that mechanism, knowing what your, your body weight, what your delivery looks like when it comes to a slower green and less turn and these players are up for the task. It just took Ashley a couple of ends to really hone in, and here she goes. So, Sarah Kelly to try and maintain this pressure. Not on a bad line. She'll miss under, but she'll crash in. Just needed a little bit more width. Good to have everyone's company from wherever you're watching from around the world. Battle of the Northern Hemisphere. And Lucy Beer. She's cut it back. Only one single scored from the five ends so far. Other than that, we've had three threes already. Moving up in numbers. Six zero was the score in favour of Guernsey after three. Ireland have roped that back and levelled proceedings. Sarah Kelly needs it to run just a bit short. Needed another little bit of weight. Are we going big here, Barry? Oh, I, I think Lucy. I think I saw Rose trying to get Lucy to change. There, no, you've got help now, Lucy. You've got yep. to stay on the forehand. So you hear me say the word framed or boxed. Um, that head was a single bowl target before that last bowl of. Sarah's, and it's become a wider target. Um, so if you've got a wider target and bowls to use, it's the percentage game to get down there and try and use them. As we see, Ashley coming in for a look here. Very, very important stage of this end to try and call the correct shot. Okay, so the, the outcome here that Sarah's really looking for is to get another one close, but not widen or broaden this target. So... Ideally, get behind. Uh, doesn't want to. Doesn't want to make this wider. Well, there's a big target now for yeah. Lucy. I still think it's forehand. Cannon. Yep. Through Jack having the back bowl there, but Rose has asked her to change hands. Tricky shot. It is. It's coming. She's trying hard here is Lucy B. She's not far away here, Barry. Needs it to clear the front. Won't, but how far up will it go? Not enough. So oh, One down's not so bad. It's not, considering it could have been worse and was too. But the Irish, all of a sudden, they take the lead. After being down 6-0, they've roped it back in three ends. This contest, very intriguing so far. Another long jack. That oh, one dancing on the edge. So I'm going to see the jack on the tee again here. Ashley, she's put the mat in the exact same spot as she did previously in the other direction. So there's definitely that idea of just getting rhythm out on a high line here. This one won't come back. This is the stage of the game, Val, where the players, they're, 
they feel an idea of the rink and how it's playing is pretty much signed off now. It's all done. But now this is the really important part of the match where everything comes back to rhythm, just getting in your own rhythm, your own tempo, making sure that you know, you're, you're approaching the mat the same way, the, the timing from when you, you start your delivery to the time you release is always around the same time. Uh, I know some, some bowlers would know exactly down to the second how long that would take. It might be from the time they pick the bowl up to the time they release. might be 10 seconds. And uh, having been around some high-level players over the years, I've, I've had little chats with them, and, and they have timed themselves, and it's a really good uh, aid for your own game. If you know from the time your delivery starts, for some it might be picking the bowl up, for some it might be when they approach the mat, but you want to try and do that around the same time. Uh, you don't want to be delivering some bowls at 15 seconds and some at five or six. There's no continuity in that, and that can really hurt your consistency and you'll see someone like Ashley here one little swing set up and around about the same time every time she approaches the mat no matter if it's forehand backhand or potentially even a weighted shot has been a quick match so far Baz we're already a third of the way through the allotted ends six six played of 18 an island of Come to play. Yeah, it's great to see um, you know, Commonwealth Games silver medalist Lucy Beer on the live stream today. Only two ever medals for Guernsey at the Com Games. One in women's pairs in 1986. One in women's singles in 2022. Lucy Beer is one of those. And she was a bit shocked when she realised last year. But an amazing story nonetheless. She's a great character, as you said before, Baz. Yeah, you always know what you're going to get with Lucy. She's always up for a chat and a bit of a banter. Um, but one thing I'm really loving about the live stream is Val is not only on, the, on this channel, but Gold Coast Tweed's channel, but if you went through the list of countries and nations that have been on the live stream, it's just great to see everyone getting their slice of fame, if you'd like to put it that way, um, get their, getting themselves out there and having a game on the live stream and some players it might be for the first time. And um, it's great to see everyone getting their chance to show their wares out on the, on the cameras and... To be fair, um, with everyone holding a mobile phone these days, the technology is there. And if you're a country or someone out there at Clubland, perhaps get in touch with Bowls Australia, and that's a good start. Um, and they'll be able to help you in, in how to do it. Um, you know, usually it's just a tripod and a, and a phone. So the more live streaming, the better. We can see Bowls being played all around the world. It's highly recommended. 32 countries will be covered with it, or overall for the fortnight with at least one stream, but could even be more, Barry, with the broadcast matches coming up later in the week. Who knows? We could see a bolter get through to the final. But Lucy Beer, she's an MBE, a world champion already in her own right, winning the World Cup singles, which is now the World Bowls Indoor Championships at Warella in 2018. Two other finals there in 17 and 19 a four-time European Championships gold medal winner. Three of which in the same event in 2019, which was in Guernsey. Yeah, she needs to pull out a big one here, Val. Forehand, dead draw. 20 inches of room. Just to make a few here for Lucy Beer. Can she add? Can she add to, I think it's one at the moment, 20 inches of room. Going to miss high. Oh. See what the confirmation is. Good effort. That's just the one. So we continue this seesawing contest. Wait for our scoreboard attendant to update that just to confirm. And Ashley Rainey's just standing in the way. No, it was a two to Guernsey. So they take the lead again. Eight, seven after seven. And as we see, as Guernsey gets the mat back, complete different jack location. Similar mat location, but much shorter jack. 
This length would only be 24 or 25 metres. So Rose looking to play this shorter length and get on early. Ashley now switching to the backhand just because that front one of Rose's is just probably in her shoulder, in her eye. And then uh, as we see Ashley now, new hand. Interesting to see how she goes because if she, she does play it well, she might stick to it. That's a good line for first look. AFL finals this weekend, Val. Now let's go, mate. Melbourne, yes. my boys, are coming Thursday. up against Collingwood Thursday night. Thursday Who have you got, night. mate? Let's look, let's be honest. Look, I'm sorry, Baz, but oh, I reckon I reckon I'm the sorry, pies. Baz. I reckon the pies, but look, happy, no, to day be, happy to be proven wrong. Yeah, their system is good enough, I think. All right, we well, might have to have a coffee on that one. Might have to. Ashley, be two beautiful lines. I'm, I'm, I think I'm in favour of that hand to be the hand yeah. to be leading on. I, uh, I know I'm, I'm left-handed, but, uh, but I feel if I was out there, I'd be feel that's just the better hand to, to get some rhythm on. Um, Rose crashing in there. Ashley, you know, playing two beautiful lines on her backhand in this direction. And uh, just a matter of finding the right weight now. Uh, a pretty good line again. Just needs to work back in now. Needs to hurry. Just her weight in the end, so a couple of feet short. Yeah, we're, uh, the green is uh, littered with... Big name players this morning, Val. Like you say, Lucy Beer, well, world champion, Commonwealth Games, silver medalist, European champion, big name across yep. across bowls in the UK and Europe. So defeated Beck Van Ash in the twenty eighteen World Bowls Indoor Championships final. So we know what she can do. She was the only player to beat Alan Ryan at the Commonwealth Games last year. Or from the Trans-Tasman onwards, only one person beat Alan Ryan in any sort of format. And that's what she does. Yep. Great shot. That changes everything now. So that went from an open draw to slightly closed off. Sarah Kelly here now. Probably the first objective is to get this bowl up there. So turn the front blue... Sip one of the red bowls, even trail the jack out of there. This is what she's done. Some contact. If it's in her favour, it might work out well. Well, that's good. So The red bowl does fall over. It's probably just one. There's a nice photo that Wenty Leagues put up uh, yesterday. Baz of uh, Kelsey with a 13-year-old Taylor Bruce. And how Taylor wanted to get a photo with her and... Um, and meet one of her idols, and you now she's won the World Bowls singles title. Now the blue ribboned showpiece events in bowls. Sarah Kelly sends hers down. She's on a bit of a tight line here. It's a little bit more width needed. Lucy Beer with her final bowl of this eighth end. Yeah, I did see that, Val. Um, and thank you to Wendy Leagues and also... Um Kevin Hickland, who who wrote that story, because they're the stories that are that show so much history and passion and um, and journeys these athletes have been on. I remember meeting Taylor um, not long around the same time. Just you could see the enthusiasm and the passion and the love for the sport from such a young age, and uh, gone away, set up her career, set up her life, juggled many other things away from the game, and. Sometimes when everything's going well in life and everything's set up, can help set up good performances on the green. Sarah just pulling up short there. So yeah. one to Guernsey. Nine seven is their lead. Sorry, Baz. No, that's fine. And and it just goes to show if you you're working hard on your game and you're working hard on everything around your sport and your athlete lifestyle, um, if you can get everything in a really settled position. Um, it puts you in a good good space. And, and that's what we're seeing from a lot of these athletes already. 
they're always, always giving shout outs to their sponsors, giving shout outs to their employers. Uh, some of these athletes are away two, three, four months of the year competing and and we really cannot do without the partners of the athletes, the sport and of course the employers and this this event alone sees the athletes not only out on the greens for a couple of weeks but preparing in events and preparing in training for many, many months. That one from Rose, just missing a bit wayward. Get Lucy to hop off and there's the photo. Well done, Locke. Taylor Bruce and Kelsey Cottrell. Both baby face there. What has happened since? Both of them are world champions. Taylor Bruce has done the world champ of champs and world bowls championships back to back. Of course, the world champion of champions will be taking place next week. Three consecutive weeks of world bowls events. And Rabina next week will be the showpiece for the world singles champion of champions. That'll be the setting. Ashley Rainey wants to clear. She does a nice little wave from Sarah Kelly there. We've been going up in three end blocks here, Baz. First three went to Guernsey. Second three went to Ireland. The next two have gone to Guernsey. So will we see the trend continue? Rosoja. Needs a clear run. Just yeah. missing high and, and, and wide and fast. But yeah, I, I still think um, the players will go to another level. I just think that with that sort of pushy conditions post the big heavy downpour yesterday, players are finding it hard just to get both things happening at the moment. So line and length. As we see, two beautiful lines there from Ashley, but just as they're focusing so heavy on getting the right line, it's just hard to string the weight and line together. And we're seeing a little bit about that across the rinks. Um, I'm scouring the other rinks, and it's always a good leveller for, for an athlete or for a bowler out there at any level. When you're out there playing and the green's full of bowlers... It's, uh, it's always, you know, something the players are doing all the time. They're always um, going to be judging their own bowls. But have a look around left and right and just see what the standard is on all the rinks. Sometimes the conditions just win. Now, if you're struggling to get inside two feet and you look around all the other heads around you across all the rinks and no one's getting inside two feet either, that can just give you a bit more of a better um, relaxed and a bit more composure knowing that just, just stay composed, stay you know, focused and try and play the best you can to the conditions. And quite often you'll see, um, you won't, you quite often you'll see across most rinks, the pattern is, is the same. That one just going to go through there from Sarah Kelly after Lucy Beard secured a little bit of a result by crashing in off one of Rose Ogers. Up next, we've got the Australian men's fours team up against Malta. Yeah, Lucy Beer on the charge, chasing down after that one. See where that one ends up. Just short on the run in. Yep. Uh, two feet, but that's two shots to Guernsey. Sarah, well, she'll be down on the forehand here, looking to trail the jack, or open this head up. Some form of arriving weight, maybe a couple of feet. Needs to hold. Been darting back late, but she's not far away here is Sarah it's Kelly. Oh, played it well. Very well. Nicely played from the Irish superstar. Yeah, beautiful weight control. Weight control to hold around the front and just get under the wide bowl there. Great shot, as we see. Jack in the middle. And that really makes it hard for Guernsey here. Yep, it's where she wanted it. And Joe Franzi watching on. Baz, loving your tips. What's one tip for singles players who don't have the advantage of a coach to speak to, especially during critical moments in a match? Yeah, definitely with singles, um, I feel it's always good to break the game down into maybe four or five different parts. So uh, maybe try and get to a number first, uh, try and get to t 10 first. And if you can't get to 10 first, you know, work on getting to 15 and so on. But um, I think forget about the scoreboard as well. You know, in terms of obviously knowing the score to get to a certain number, but don't let the score dictate everything you're doing. Um, 
and then make sure you are con- constructing a really strong routine and rhythm in your singles play. In team play, it can it can be broken up a bit. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, but in singles, definitely when you're uh, trying to be as consistent as you can in a in a uh, say a twenty five up or twenty one up performance, your routine, sticking by that routine, approaching the mat the same way, and taking your time while you're doing it. You don't want to get caught in a rip. You don't want to get uh, in a panic situation. Just stay composed and. But uh, it's all about contingencies as well in singles because four bowls, if your player is playing really well and, and they just seem to be getting in a rhythm themselves, knowing that when you get the mat back, you've got to be comfortable in breaking the game up. You'll see Aaron Sheriff in the singles semi-final of the Australian Open this year. His opposition was playing very well. And he said, my, my contingency here is mat up. And play a short length. And, and that is away. a... Brilliant bowl. Sorry, Baz. You're up. No, it was a great shot, great changeover. But, yeah, be able to go to a short length or a long length and um, take that from your opponent. The best in the business is Mario Lester at analysing the sport and giving you tips. That's why he's paid the big bucks. But I don't spend it at Pacific Fair like you, Val. No, you may not. <laughs> but I do love my shopping, those who... Listen to Watch Ringside a lot. We'll know that. And as we watch on the replay here, Sarah Kelly, two booming conversion shots, rectifying a two down to one up and then changing hands and putting it right on the jack with the uh, with the change up. Huge confidence booster, Val. That is massive. To be able to achieve what you want to set out to achieve on forehand, then to go to the backhand as well. It's unbelievable. Nine all after nine. High scoring. Both teams averaging one shot an end and just feel as though Ashley Rainey is putting the foot down here in this lead battle and it's starting to pay dividends for Ireland, but they've lost more ends than they've won. So Lucy Beer is really proving tough to beat at the back end. But the front end pressure from Ashley Rainey has been good. Yeah, getting those bowls, you know, sort of jack high or beyond, as you see there. Ashley, she's got the confidence now of playing weight again. When I say weight again, might only be a foot or two, but knowing she's got that bowl waiting. So, gee, it's a good feeling as a, as a skip and as a front-end player, knowing that you've got free run to your target. And the target, nine times out of ten in the sport of bowls, is the jack. So being able to access that target and get a clear view of it is so important for all players. And it starts with the leads. You want to get close, but your your number one job in a team event for a lead is to stay out of the way and um, get things in good homes. Yeah, and and stay out of the way for you, um, stay out of the way for your teammates, because they're there to execute a job. If it's a second, third, or skip, they're there to play the bowls when it matters. But if they can't access the head because their actual teammates got in the way, you are definitely contradicting what you're setting setting out to do. And um, so, for all the leads out there. Get, uh, get get out there in your practice and start getting used to trailing the jack. And uh, no better example than trying to putt the ball, ball into the hole in golf. As we know, all golfers are trying to putt a foot or two beyond the hole. No different to leads in team events. This is a really tough group, this one. New Zealand, Ireland, Guernsey. All three nations, very capable. Papua New Guinea, Philippines, Argentina, UA and Namibia also in this group. Section two of the women's pairs. And a win first up is always a bonus. Yeah, good communication between Ashley and Sarah there. So the comment so Great to see the team deciding, the team, not just Sarah walking away going, this is what I'm playing. Sarah communicating with Ashley, throwing in their two bobs worth, and now Sarah walks away forehand, knowing exactly what's best for the team. And it is forehand to try and trail the jack to Ashley's bowls, missing high on this occasion, but Ashley is right across exactly what Sarah's trying to do, and that also helps when it comes to when the job gets done, so... Ashley can really cheer Sarah on and get behind her because she knows exactly what she's trying to get uh, achieve here. As Lucy 
needs to try and change this up. Take that shot away from Sarah. Well, she's done well. She might not have counted, but she's definitely going to force Sarah to play something different here as Ashley goes in for a look. So it's taken away the forehand trail. The only issue with backhand now is that promoting the bowl of Jersey. So it's one of those ones, yeah, do you stick to do you stick to the forehand or play backhand and, and run the risk of hitting the opposition bowl up? So it's forehand it is. Sarah Kelly. She got. It's under. It is. Get a slide off the front. She's close to this edge here. Might do so, but... Wow, that could be enough. I think it is. Might just be, looking at the angle here, though, it does look as though that front bowl of Guernsey is, is close up. Last year at the Com Games, Lucy and Rose paired up in Birmingham and they missed out after a draw to Malta. They missed out by two points off top spot. They finished in third and had a healthier shot difference than the Norfolk Island in second. Lucy Beer, big chance of trailing this jack here. Very close, Lucy Beer. She's going to crash in, but that should probably be enough. So close, hard to tell. These camera angles can be deceiving. Yeah, it's hard to tell whether the bowl over there at 3 o'clock of Sarah Kelly's is the shot or the front stuff there from Guernsey. We'll soon find out. For me, if... Island are down. We might see a little bit of control weight looking to turn the shot bowl up the front onto the jack to make a number. But if you are holding, well, maybe it's a game of protecting then. Try and do maybe get out to 8 or 9 o'clock and cover any jack movement out there. So I can't really call the shot here because I'm not sure who has the shot, which is the main dictator here. But we'll soon find out. So Sarah Kelly from Ireland on the uh, on the beautiful greens here at Musgrave Hill. Just about 10, 10 minute drive to Surface Paradise, the heart of the Gold Coast. Yeah, not bad at all. Beautiful view of the Southport skyline as well. Sarah Kelly, if it's weight, they're down. Well, she's all over this here, Sarah Kelly. Can she get both bowls? Just needs to be careful with jack movement. Oh, she, well, she does get them both, and it, it well. stays there. It's close. Everything falls out. I think that's one. They're making us earn it here, Val. We can't quite find who's got shot there. It's hard to pick. I'm favouring the front bowl of Sarah Kelly's. It was a good shot either way, but Lucy Beer still has one more. Gee, great technique for uh, playing weighted shot there for Sarah Kelly. Everything looked balanced in time as well. Very big, strong step and a lot of body weight in behind that. And what that does, it takes the pressure off creating a, a quicker speed in the arm when you've got good body weight through the through the delivery. As we see Lucy Beer here. Should we just look to draw the shot or maybe try and kick the jack back down the line? She needs to be careful. Far away. Well, she's got all of it. Has it followed through enough? Yes, that it has. And a little fist pump from Lucy Beer. Makes use of that last bolt. And again, Guernsey take the lead. 10-9 after 10. This one, looking like it's going to be a grandstand finish. Up next, Australia and Malta in the fours. It'll be at 11.30 a.m. Very much looking forward to that. Men's fours, that is. Of course, the disciplines have reversed. So men's singles and fours this week, women's pairs and triples this week. All the para-disciplines are done. Hayden, the Australians are taking on the Philippines. We're up 12-3 so far. That's after eight ends. You can look at all the live scores on world2023.bowls.com.au. Well, 
Lovely start there from Rose. That's a brilliant shot right in behind the jack. No angles for the opposition to work off. They've got to try and draw this cold here. So Ashley Rainey, nice line. So what we see, uh, and just going back to my last thing, of course Ashley's not trying to do that on purpose. It's just trying to play the right bowl, the right touch, trying to draw the shot there, and, and that's completely perfect. But unfortunately, what that's caused now is not only for Ashley, but Sarah, that's caused that bowl to pretty much shut down that hand. It's in the way, isn't it? They'll have to change up. Yeah, if you don't change up, so as Ashley's not changing up now, but it's just a game of persistence. So trying to turn that bowl up or then just work around it as much as you can or under it. So you might see this bowl now be shifted. If not, work in under. So... And that is, well, that's the boss, Baz. Yeah, so what that's what I said there about persistence. So for Ashley then, she can start on a fresh new hand, forehand, or um, and maybe miss everything, line and length. But if your bowl is short in, in, and in the way like that, nine times out of ten, most people will change. But then changing, are you confident to change? And if not, just persist, try and add that yard. And as you see there, beautiful correction from Ashley, and she was rewarded. And she can afford to do it again now even with slightly more weight, because if she doesn't achieve what she did with the last bowl, she might get through to a good home. Sarah Beer watching on. Nice shot, Lucy. Your dad is still awake. Well, good evening to the parents of Lucy Beer. Ah, lovely to see that. Lovely to see uh, families from, tuning in from overseas. I know they would love to be here and... And, uh, and that's what something the players would have done over the last couple of days in their downtime, connected with family, back home, friends. I'm sure there would have been a lot of FaceTime, a lot of uh, just senses of being at home. I know a lot of the countries would have their, their units, their hotels, their rooms all decked out with flags and little mementos uh, in their rooms or on the walls uh, just to get a sense of feeling at home. And there's no better sense of when you're on the road for weeks and weeks just uh putting some photos up and making things feel like at home and i'm sure these players would be doing that and have done it and uh just to create that really nice feeling and it's so good to see family members from overseas tuning in so good discussion happening here and many of these discussions are all about the what-ifs. What if the jack kicks out to the left or right? Is it best I get there now or do I go there later? So that co communication, it's probably no more important element to the, to the sport of bowls is communication. So this match just heating up a gear. In nine, the breakthrough or the break hasn't been made. Anytime someone looks as though they've got the momentum, the other one just pulls it back. Lucy just coming underneath, so Ireland still holding one. All three greens in action here. Musgrave Hill have been definitely one of the leading clubs on the Gold Coast for many years now, hosting... Major events throughout the year. And, of course, being a host of... Well, careful. Bowl only. What a shot there from Sarah she Kelly. He's playing some very, very good deliveries in this match. Under the front and sitting the second shot bowl to make a two. David um, Axon asking how the Welsh boys are going as we look at the replay here. Baz, talk to us about the weight and line control of that. Yeah, well, just to play that right uh, line under the front too. If she crashes, crashes on the front blue bowl, she's out of the game, but played it with a lot of confidence, making two. But now, Lucy, she'll be on the charge here. She's got all the back stuff. But is it to crack an egg and just kick the jack into that little pool of bowls, or do you look to go a bit firmer and get the jack right out of there? Unbelievable from Sarah Kelly. Yeah, David Axton asking about the Welsh boys. We don't know, unfortunately, how they're going. They're on a different green, but you can go to world2023.bowls.com.au. Check out the live scores. Yeah, live scores. What a, uh, well, who would have thought we'd see that? 
it's amazing to see where we've come with our technology, live scores, multiple live streaming. It's, uh, yeah, it's coming. Well, we get a good idea on how to spell Guernsey. And yeah, Rose really, yeah. and and it happens, it happens at all levels of the game. Um, there's a there's a feeling. I personally uh, try to stay away from it. I uh, I think it's just an etiquette to the actual players down the other end. I try to stay off the centre of the rink. I know personally when I'm playing, uh, or especially when I'm driving, I don't like anyone standing in the middle of the rink. Yeah. But um, because it just creates the opportunity for any movement, um, unexpected movement. And uh, we'll have it. we'll c continue to monitor that throughout the, the the event and chat to the players the best we can. But once again, sorry Val, the players are just so focused. Oh, of course, um, and they're in a world championship. Yep. So, you know, got to be mindful of that as well. Any it's not all about here? it's not all about us. No, a little bit of promotion. That well, that well, has that done for four Barry? Two, three. That's knocked in a third. I reckon this might be four. That's a huge result. Just three, three taps on. Oh, four no, it, it is. is four. Wow, that is unbelievable. Converting from Sarah Kelly, and maybe, just maybe, that's the break. Thirteen to ten, Island lead for just the second time in this match, and all of a sudden, from one down, they're three up. Yeah, you can see the the trees in the background there. The flags are they're starting to really hum along now. Northwesterly breeze. So the flags are up for the players. Try and really read the conditions best as they can here to try and get some routine, some, some rhythm up on one hand. And I think that's the key for me. I think getting that jack up under the clubhouse, the conditions where we are, Val, there's not a breath of wind. So if you can get that jack up under the clubhouse, you'll find the last probably five or six metres of the bowl coming into play won't be as heavily as affected but that that win now is almost a, a straight northerly and you see that bulk coming across the screen in a pretty wide angle that's that breeze having a bit of an effect as we'll see probably the opposite here this bowl will probably run straight for quite a while and just finish slightly as it comes in so Rose Oja the lead battle has well and truly been taken by Ashley Rainey after the first few ends. In the favour of the legal assistant from Guernsey. He's been working in the industry for 40 years. That's uh, pretty handy. Rose needing uh, probably about three feet of weight here. And, well, she's achieved the T anyway. So that's uh, handy. That's the beauty of this uh, format. If you can reach, trying to improve your weight, if you can reach with your second or third, the result may be that you get to the T. Okay. Ashley, well... Just slid through. An end here now, just so important for Guernsey. A multiple, if they can get it, they'll have last bowl. Gone end for end in the last few. No one has won multiple ends since Guernsey. In end seven and eight, we sit on end 12 now. Rose Ogier with a good line. Just going past with weight. So Lucy Beer has a bit to work with. But Sarah Kelly, her draw game has been superb. A lot of fans watching from Guernsey as we near 1am in the morning. Good evening to you. I hope you've got the cups of coffee or tea out. Ready to pull an all-nighter here for Ringside Live. Yeah, I tried doing that the other night. Didn't quite uh, come through the goods, Val. Trying to stay up and watch my boys play, Chelsea. And, How'd they go? And uh, let's not... Well, I've brought it up, I guess. I probably shouldn't have, but... Um, <laughs> Nottingham Forest, we had 76% of possession. Chelsea, great shot. Sarah Kelly is uh, on a heater now. She's really lighting it up out there. 
really feeling it. Uh, yeah, 76% of possession, and we lost 1-0. I, what minute was the goal? At Stings. Uh, I, I can't remember, actually, but um, <laughs> I know we missed a lot of chances, Val, and uh, I was starting to get excited after our win against Luton Town. But anyway, back to the drawing board we go. Definitely love the uh, English Premier League. Yep, it is good. Ange Postacoglu doing all right, sitting in second position after four games. And my boys, Liverpool, two points off the lead. Bloody Man City, though. <coughs> yeah, it's always uh, early days. I know this time of year, but yeah, it's always the some of the big big teams will get out to a good start and pretty much stay there. So we've got a lot of work to do. But Yeah, I will say those Chelsea kits, however, some of the best in the league. Yeah. They look sensational. Blue, Blue is and gold. Colour. Blue is the colour, mate. Pride of London. Lucy Beer, short, four feet, online, looking to get another win in there, but may have got in Sarah Kelly's way as Corey Wedlock gets in our way. Walking past, no, he's all he right. He can do what he wants. He's got a World Championships gold medal now. Ah, he can always do what he wants, no matter what titles he's got. It's Corey Wedlock, one of the nicest guys going around in bowls. He's got his partner and mum here today watching. Great to see. And that is 1966. I know you didn't want me to bring it up, but it's a good stat. No, you can bring it up all you like. It just means I've got to go back to 2016. We're not, we're not talking but, about that um, year. It's fine. But no, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. It's um, you know, you got to love seeing uh, new history created, and yeah. um, as much as if you've got a favourite team and you want to see them win all the time, it's always good to see someone win for the first time in a long time, and and that was our uh, the Australian men's triples winning. Uh, it was a long, long drought. The but very first World Bowls Championships, and maybe that's an omen for the St Kilda Football Club, Baz. Because that was the year of their only premiership. There you go. I was, I was wondering where you're going with that. That's, uh, that's a good one. I like that. But so I, who knows? I'm still, I'm still back at the magpie the other day at Broad Beach. I think yeah. that was the omen for some reason. A dancing magpie, oh, magpie strutting through confidently. Well, it was at, Mus- it was at Mudry Bar, mm-hmm. dancing along the green, and then it was around our feet at Broad Beach. I think it was the same magpie just reminding us to... Um, yeah, maybe have a good look at Collingwood come finals, but well, who knows? Melbourne have they've got to beat Melbourne first up, and they're looking okay. The D's, so we'll see what happens. I expect you to be fully kitted out if they win on Friday. First, on Friday, yes. Yep. Lucy Beer, great speed that time, just missing the line. So just trying to get a bit of both happening there. So we're going to see an umpire measure here. So, uh, look, I'm favouring one to Guernsey who, who just, they simply need to win this end. But yeah. having said that, that ball of Ireland sitting just forward of it. So, very interesting. The chonks are there and a wonderful job our ITOs are doing. They've been great for the first week and always a smile on their face, happy to be doing what they're doing. Yeah, it's almost at a almost at a gust level, that, that, uh, that wind. Now, the... The camera angle you're seeing there, that's the west end of the bowling green under the clubhouse, but the east end, the other other direction, those flags are gusting now. And One to Guernsey, Baz. Yeah, one it is. And teams now will have to be really strategic with where they're placing the mat and jack. Do they want to have the jack right out in the middle of the green where it's fully exposed or up under the... The wall, it's, it's really strategic now. So we'll see Rose roll the jack. So it's going to be in the middle. Short length, 25 metres. So Matt's basically in the middle and so is the jack. So it's going to be a kind length. And Guernsey will be looking to get it on a bit of a run here. Don't want to leave it too late. Yeah, some big scores happening. Philippines twenty-two to two against Argentina, and as you pointed out just then, Val, New Zealand Commonwealth Games yeah, bronze medalist good. Caitlin Inch and Selena Goddard just um, letting everyone know that they they're keen to go one well, one or two steps further than last year. Thirty-two to zero against PNG. 
So and around the around the greens, Baz, I think Argentina are leading Scotland in the men's fours. That's of course Jason Banks, Derek Oliver, Paul Foster, and Alex Marshall. I think it's ten six or eight six. After nine ends. Or well, wouldn't that be an upset? We saw them the other day with the messy chant. Yeah, they're they're full of life, aren't they? The Argentinian they are they, uh, life, yeah. yeah, they're having a great time. They're chanting and laughing and having a yeah, really really good to see. As you know, as much as all the players want to um, you know play well and achieve great things, there's so much going on. As I see some of the the players out yesterday enjoying some time down the beach, you know, getting out and having a look around the Gold Coast and taking it in for what it's got to offer and. Yes, there's obviously a very serious component to this event. And uh, it's a question I've been asked many years, you know, some of my best memories in bowls, and some of them have nothing to do with being out on the green. <coughs> For me in 2018 in the Commonwealth Games Village, it's just out walking one night, I think coming back from the food hall, and there was, there was some Moans uh, all sitting around on the grassy area playing instruments and singing, and I stood there for about an hour and just went, wow, this is what the Commonwealth Games are all about, hearing the island sounds yep. um, and hearing all hearing all the different sounds and cultures and and that's what this World Championships definitely has a has a component of. You see PNG, Samoa. Yeah, I think watching the Cook Islands Cook as well Islands, last yeah. year, they were performing at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham just outside the grandstand of the main rink and it was great to see. Yeah, just you could hear, you could listen to that island music for, for hours upon hours Fijians, etc. So they're just a beautiful people, having a great time here. Always up and down the green, smiling, no matter what the score is. Just enjoying the sport and enjoying the opportunity. They certainly are. Now, 13-11 in favour of Ireland. Momentum still not really with anybody. There was that big four that could be telling in the end for the Irish, but Guernsey, thanks to Lucy Beer and... Rose Ogier. Rocks in and that'll be a couple. Could even be three. For Guernsey after Lucy Beer's first. So it's going to be up to Sarah Kelly yet again to pull out something big, which is what she's been doing. What has she got here? She's not far away, is Sarah Kelly. Ashley Rainey likes it. She follows, and that will do. Converts it away. Now there's plenty more room for Lucy Beer. Sarah Kelly doing very nicely. Yeah, great conversion there, right in the area. Great weight control, not to kick the jack back too far. Okay, unfortunate result there for Lucy, but Sarah Kelly, bit of a free shot at this, about three feet of room to count, she's got her hand up saying sorry, I think she just got that one away too good. Big bowl here for Lucy Beer, no one has won consecutive ends since end eight, we're on end 13. going to crash in here, Lucy Beer. She'll get rid of the congestion, but promotes Sarah Kelly's bowl right up yeah, to shot. Missing under a couple of times there, Val. Just trying to probably, probably play it a little bit perfect, but good efforts both times. Sarah Kelly, she doesn't want to do the same. She's trying to use all the room she can get, but missing high and heavy on that occasion. So it'll be just one to the Irish. And after 13 ends, it's 14-11. So Guernsey 
Haven't scored a multiple since N7. They scored a fair few earlier on. This match by no means over. Very, very close. Ireland currently holding sway, but Guernsey have been brilliant. We're going to have a chat about where they're going to put this jack and where they're going to put the mat. Do they change things up a little bit? We're going end for end at the moment. A big four for Ireland. It's been the one. Okay, jack length, 30 metres, heading in towards that northwesterly, green speed, 13 and a half seconds, huge downpour yesterday morning, lots of lightning and thunder, but much needed, much needed rain for not only the greens, but the surrounds, the gardens, everything for the Gold Coast. Very, very dry, four or five months. Hardly a drop of rain. And that downpour couldn't have come at a better time yesterday. Yeah, it was a bit in the morning, wasn't there? I checked the radar when I woke up, and there was a fair bit of green and orange on the um, on the bomb. Yeah, those, it's really good for the... For the local weather here, those those storms, good rain, and definitely helping these these bowls clubs with their with their conditions. So obviously the surrounds, a lot of the um, the grass, the gardens, and so on. So that rain came at a really good time because there was no bowls being played yesterday. And um, I got asked, just asked. Yesterday, what's uh, by someone? Just uh, what would some of the players be doing in their day off? And, and some players would be looking to really put a lot of time in and start fresh in their new uh, disciplines. Some players maybe just getting some time with their coaches to really focus on what their week looks like, logistics. You know, what times the bus leaving, uh, what venues are at. Really sitting down, having their discipline meetings, and focusing on their learnings from da uh, the first week what greens they've played on. Some players might have a little notebook with them. They've written notes down on how rinks are reacting, what were the learnings from different greens and different clubs, and using all that knowledge uh, and putting it into this week. And that knowledge will come from not only what you've learned, but the knowledge will come from a lot of the players that have played at different dis different venues and in different disciplines as well. So uh, the more you can arm yourself with that insight, it can help to performance. As Ashley... Uh, she's probably holding two here. Uh, that, but the beauty for her is that that forehand's pretty much blocked up now, and Rose is covered. We'll put a bowl out there on the wing, as you can see there, sort of out there at two thirty, two o'clock. So it'd be Sarah Kelly here, ideally trying to draw another on her forehand, but not opening that jack up for Lucy Beer. Big end here for Guernsey, another big end. I need a multiple. Haven't scored one in seven ends. Sarah Kelly. Well, she's found her weight and her line almost perfectly, but that's a good home as well if that jack does get trailed. And then Lucy Beer, she's done a really good line here, Val. She's got the weight. I think she could draw this. It's just a matter of reaching now. Needs to go underneath. Well, she's promoted that bowl up. Has she... Ease the congestion a bit. I think she just needs to be out on a wider line. Yeah, probably cut it back to one, which is a good start. So second shot, Sarah Kelly. Pretty much the same bowl for me. Just let that breeze bring it in. Okay, forehand for Lucy Beer. 
This is absolutely massive. Yeah, connection on her own or just try and slide around and draw the shot. Lucy Beer, it's coming. It's coming, but it's not going to get there. She's got one more left in the tank here. As she sprints up to have a quick look. Two balls at the back on the tee. Yeah, just but trying to correct there, yeah. Val. Like That's the, the speed of this green at the moment. You're not seeing... It's not really easy to correct because of the pace at the moment and you're playing into a breeze. So the touch bowls is not quite there. It's a bit more of a, a push than, than touch play. But that's good, like really good intent from Lucy to be up there and promote her nearest bowl. Martin Jenkins asking a little bit about the bowls colour. They're all playing with red or blue. That's an initiative of World Bowls and the Commonwealth Games. So each team or each player will travel with one set of red and one set of blue bowls. And they are the exact, or maybe not the exact type. Everyone's got a few sets at home, but the exact same brand as what they normally use. And they get to choose which ones they want to use. And a lot of people are using XGs here as Ashley Rainey is. Sarah Kelly using Era Optimas as, she, as she's just sent down there. Lucy Beer. And Rose Oja using Taylor SRs. But generally, yes, that is the brand that sponsors them. And the bowls manufacturer. Yeah, and some of the bowls manufacturers, to their credit, have um, lent out bowls to some countries, to some players that aren't sponsored and aren't supported so or didn't have their own. And, and uh, it's great to see also. Um, there's an array of different brands out there. And, and uh, like you said, Val, they're all blue, all red. Much easier for viewing. Lucy Beer. It's not far away, but it is going to dart in, I think. Just pulling up. And it is going to pull up. So, Ireland, well, this one. Are we getting a second here? And are they going to make a crucial break? I think that was just the one, Baz, was it? Oh, didn't quite catch it, Val. No. I'm just waiting to see now the score. So it's It was a two. 14 ends played. 16-11. Yeah, it's a Ireland. nice lead. Very yeah. nice lead. You're right. Well, four ends to play, Baz. They lead by five. So it's just made the, just made the prospect a little bit more difficult for Guernsey. And it's the first time since ends seven and eight that we've had multiple ends in a row. So Ireland... Have made a little break now. And it's probably the first time that we've seen one. And in the men's fours, after 10 of 15 ends, Argentina leads Scotland 9-6. That, of course, has Oliver, Foster, Marshall and Banks. Wow. Yeah, it's... Uh it's early, early days, early, um, early event, early championship for the, the different disciplines to last week. And, of course, we saw Australia in the men's triples lose two sectional matches, got through. Yeah, there's so many battles to be won well and truly before finals. Um, some of their hardest games might be in the pools and then some of their easier games may just work out in the finals. It's just that's the way it is. It's the way it sets up with the large pools. And... Um, but, yeah, ideally, you, you want to win them all, but the reality is you're coming up against great teams time and time again. So Rose Oja has gone to the bathroom for a quick comfort stop. And she'll be back out very shortly as Ashley Rainey says, you know what, I'm just going to roll the jack anyway. Let's see if Ireland can make things as difficult as possible for the Guernsey products to come back and mount something of this. Guernsey, of course, led 6-0 after three ends. Ireland roped that back within three to take a lead, 7-6. Guernsey pulled out to a 9-7 lead again and led it 10-9 after 10. Since then, they've only won one more end. Ireland with a four on end 11. It is proving... Very vital as Rose Oja makes her way back onto the green. Ashley said, here's your welcome back present. And it's yep. a, almost a side-resting touch-up. So Rose has to be reaching from the get-go here. 
forehand it is. Looking to disturb the jack high setup, if not get past. Just falling short, so she'll be disappointed with that one. She needs to try and correct immediately with her second bowl. If not, be getting something past. Because if uh, Lucy Beer gets on the mat down, she wants to have bowls to play to if she's not holding. Especially the way the scoreboard's set up. Starting to try and chase a number here. Create something. And that's usually what you need. Bowls past Jack. As we see Rose on the charge here. Forehand. Not going to get down in time. So Ashley on the backhand. Slide on past her last bowl will be handy for it. Needs to push. Well, that's enough for a count up. So Ireland have really made things difficult for Guernsey now. They've zoned in. They've found their line. They've found their weight. Took him a little bit of time early, but Ashley Rainey in the lead battle has been sensational. She stepped up about three or four gears and is in cruise control at the moment. Yeah, and for Ashley Val, it was just a case of um, settling. You know, first probably three or four ends, she wasn't playing bad. It was just a case of settling on a hand, settling on a length, and she's done that. The last uh, probably hour of the match, the last seven, eight ends of the match, when she has had the match, she's put it in the same spot, tried to put the jack in the same spot and just get into that, that really comfort zone with her delivery and the routine. So that's definitely helped her game. And uh, as we see there, two bowls within a couple of feet, just missing her line with her second delivery. But yeah, first in best dressed here. I like this play from Sarah Kelly. Yep, not Change bad Change the all. head up. She sits in front of the jack. Well, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. One in, one somewhat behind. Takes away that hand. But Lucy Beer, I reckon she'll try and sit this one away. Yeah, looking for contact. She's going to miss high, but it might end up in an okay home. I'm back as well, but I'll be going. I'll be switching hands here, Baz. For Guernsey, what do you think Ireland should now and block it all up? Yeah, I think I like this play from Sarah. Her objective now is to get behind. As you can see, those four blue bowls, nothing's really past the jack. No. So even if you go right back, uh, so even if you get right back near the near the ditch, what that does, if the deeper you go, um, what that does is make Lucy Beer's uh, weight more critical. Um, as we see, Sarah just needs to slide past now. I'll turn that over. It's not all bad either. But what that's done is expose the jack a little bit more for Guernsey. So Lucy Beer... Change of hands here, Baz. Yeah, she has a huge opportunity here. Backhand with weight, looking to trail the jack, make three or four shots. Let's see how she goes, Val. No, it is coming. She's close here, Val. This is a huge moment in this match. Lucy Beer. Wow. And that is desperately unlucky, but there's an opportunity again with a trail. If Sarah Kelly can't put one in there, you know, a, a good weight could give Lucy Beer a five. Looked good all the way, did Lucy Beer. I thought she was getting the jack right in the middle to trail it down the line for four shots. Just turning away the last minute, clipping the Irish bowl. But a consolation is she's got those four bowls not only behind Jack, but smothered around the tee. Now the conversations come between Rainey and Kelly. Okay, Sarah Kelly from Ireland on the forehand. I think she'll be trying to get the backest bowl here. Any jack movement is against her. So ideally somewhere behind, but not too far from the pack of Guernsey bowls. This needs to stay on. No, it hasn't, Barry. So an opportunity here for Lucy Beer wow. to create a five, which... With level proceedings, with three ends to play. Yeah, Lucy, she has to reach right into the top draw here now and play a big bowl. 
This is uh, these are the moments that present themselves. Got to back yourself here. Know the hand, know the weight. Any jack movement for Guernsey here. And they will be scoring. Jack back. So backhand it is. Needs to get down now. She's I think she's gone line. out too far. It's coming back eventually. She's coming, but she's going to crash in here, Baz. Oh. And all of a sudden, an opportunity to make five. As two for Ireland at least. Are we going... I think that's a three. So that could almost be all she wrote. Yeah, the intent was there, um, but that's that front-end pressure. Ashley with her first bowl, side-resting toucher almost, and then that's when the comfort sets in from there, knowing you've got the close bowls early days and you sort of dictate terms. Even though Sarah would be disappointed with her attempt for a back bowl, she got away with it. Lucy just missing. I thought that she was, was so stiff with her second. That I, was a you four. and I, we. That yeah. was a four in the end, Baz. Yeah, you and I got excited there for um, Lucy's second bowl. It yep. looked so good all the way until just the last minute. But um, those multiples, as, as we spoke, Guernsey were up 6 0. And now Ireland have gone into a 20 11 lead. Yeah, so that's a big comeback. And it's for me, as much as Sarah Kelly's played some big ones when it mattered, it's this here. It's just getting bowls yeah. from Ashley in the good areas, leading oh. up well, putting them into good zones. It's a rainy day for Guernsey, even though there is not a cloud in the sky. It's mainly because Ashley has made it rainy. Rose Ogier, good line, just short. 15-shot turnaround for the Irish. They have zoned in. They've been fantastic. They've won four of the last five ends, including a big four that set things up on end 11 before the last four on end 15. Another one behind there from Ashley Rainey. And that's, and that's really good from Ashley. She understands that Guernsey, they'll be chasing the number and looking to, you know, move some jacks and create some opportunities. So that's, that's fine. A bowl out the back there, not, not too far from the tee. Okay, Rose on the forehand, small correction required weight-wise. Needs to take a foot off. She's on a higher line. Don't think She's it'll get back in time. It won't, but the weight was nigh on perfect. That's As better, though. Previous bowl falls. Yeah, it'll two, be harder to budge. Two bowls in that scoring zone. If that bowl, the blue bowl, was to be removed, if Lucy maybe came down, looked to sit it and stay, you know, she can make three. If she comes down backhand, trails the jack. 18 inches, you can make three. So that's the power of numbers when you've got opportunities and options available to you. It's just a matter of executing them then versus being completely outnumbered all the time. But again, Ashley Rainey wins the lead battle and gives Sarah Kelly a lot to work to. There are three ends to play, including this one. Ireland... Most an end away from ensuring victory. Of course, we will play out the full allotted shot uh, ends because shots up matter. Lucy Beer, forehand here, looking to draw within about a foot. She is one down. Just missing underneath, so... Opportunity here for Sarah Kelly. And Ireland just showing... And adaptability to these conditions that they've practiced, they've worked at. Test series here in November last year. Yeah, on a good line here is Sarah. If she clears, she can sit that bowl of roses. Well, she's got a bit of it. She flops back into where it was. It 
will see be up. Well, simply they just need to score in this end here to Guernsey. And this one is going to crash in, but has it done enough? Probably not. It's close. It's still one to Ireland, I feel. That's uh, probably a good option for Sarah here to still pump up there on the backhand. The only drum with this backhand here is if she doesn't get the maximum result, which is getting that front bowl of her square, she might open up the shot bowl for Lucy. She just needs to be careful now. She might find the hole. Well, shot bowl is worth probably two for me. Lucy has got that type of shot in her repertoire. Baz, the Australians have defeated the Philippines next door, 22-5 to five in the men's fours. They kick off their campaign in style. Yeah, lots of, lots of jack movement, lots of shots played over there. Philippines, very experienced team, high-quality team, so that's a great win for Australia. All the shots played, I could see from lead right through to skip. And uh, Aussies would be happy with that. Conditions are only get tougher here, so to get some extra points on the board early on. Plus 17. Plus 17 is a good start. And as I mentioned, it'll only get windier and trickier here as Ireland win their fourth end in a row. Absolutely magnificent turnaround from them going down 6-0. It's a 16 shot turnaround. Well, if they win this end, they win. Or if they don't concede a four, they win. So this has been a supreme performance from the Irish. They're pretty good crowds too. Day one of the second week. People making their way over to Musgrave Hill Bowls Club. Great facilities, brand new facilities. Great renovations. Beautiful big restaurant, open um, bowlers lounge. Plenty of car parking. So this club... Yeah, my first time here, Baz, and it's great. Yeah, no, they've uh, come on leaps and bounds really the last 10 years, renovating all the time, upgrading their facilities for their members, and that's what it's all about. Under great management, we've had Brian Baldwin here for many years, recently retiring, um, very, very experienced manager and great planning put into place, working with the board of management here very professional unit is Club Musgrave. Um, some new branding recently, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, clubs out there updating their branding, the way their shop front looks. And they're now the, well, they're Club Musgrave, but they're the Pelicans when it comes to their bowling side of things. So they've got their identity sorted there and it's littered all around the place on walls and on signage. So that's great. And they do a good job of, hosting events you can see the scoreboard and scoreboards have got logos on them it's a very smart setup here so well done to club musgrave and thank you for being a host club like many of the other clubs that have been putting on a show they have as we see there ashley switching to the forehand it's a lovely bowl yeah backhand and forehand bit of both this end from her but Forehand proving the winner. Rose, can she get another one in? Not inside that one of Ashes. Just to get the shot, give Lucy something to play to. Well, that's enough. So a little little win there for Guernsey. Win in the front end battle. She's doing well, but... Just unfortunately, one won't do. That short bowl certainly doesn't help. One to work with from Lucy Beer from behind. The other match between Scotland and Argentina that we're bringing you or bringing you updates about. Argentina leading that 9-6 and then Scotland have scored nine shots in the last two ends. Sarah Kelly, just narrow here. The idea was to try and trail the jack two feet to those beautiful position bowls of Ashley Rainey. And Lucy Beer, well, she's got to try and get a multiple here. 
must get four shots to stay in this match. Well, there's two of them. What a shot. Front noser. Yes. Oh, they need to score a four here to keep the match alive going into the final end. Sarah Kelly on the charge, looking to upset this head. She's going under and don't think she's going to quite make it. She won't be a uh, big shake of the head. She's not happy with that one. No. I think we'll see much more aggression from Sarah with her next delivery as Lucy sets up to try and draw another. Doesn't want to spring the jack out, though. Careful, Lucy. I think she's settled in, has she? Oh, two That's rippers. Enough. So now... Opportunity for Lucy Beer to possibly send it to the last end. A four or more is perfect. That's where you look at that short red bowl from Rose Ogier and just think, imagine that was passed. Yeah, they do have the T as well, Guernsey. So it might be just a little crack of the egg with a yard to four feet from Sarah Kelly here. As you can see, those bowls. The bottom of the screen, the two blue ones, well, they're in her favour. But for me, it still might be just a case of thinking about the overall, try and get right into this head and actually take away any opportunity that Guernsey may have to win this match. So I agree. Big weight to take that away or hard weight to score. Well, big weight it is. Just take a bit of the medicine. Needs to hold. Well, it's missing. So Guernsey score one here. It is still a a draw, a draw will be possible. Lloyd Christmas kind of yes. stuff. So you're telling me there's a chance. So Lucy Beer, this direction. The last time we were playing this end, well, this way, had an opportunity to make a five, didn't cash in, conceded a four. This to make a four. And at least... Make Ireland think about a result. It's one of the hardest shots in the book, trying to add when you've got a front toucher, and that is why... Well, what happened there? Ooh, I think that could be one down. That's yeah, it's a tough shot. You've yeah. got to be there to add, and if you're only slightly over... They're going to measure here. So Ireland will win a fifth end in a row. This match is over. We know that. We'll play at the last end. For shots up, because that could matter as the tournament or as the sectional rounds continue. And that is just the one to Ireland, but they win five ends in a row. And that margin is now 11. They've won six of the past seven ends. Hazel Rainey, Ashley's mum and dad are watching Come On Girls while well, they've been sensational. They have been brilliant. Yeah, lots to learn from all players this morning as they play in that east-west direction. If I know Musgrave Hill well, they'll be switching at some stage today. And there's a few reasons for that. Uh, some, some people may be wondering why the switch of directions. Well, it's all about keeping an even wear on the surface. And uh, if you play in the one spot too much, just like anything, it'll wear out. So you'll notice they switch directions to keep the hands and the surface nice and even so that when you're watching these big games on TV, you can see the greens running really even, both hands drawing nice and running nice as opposed to keeping them in one spot. So they'll move different directions. And on our banks here in Australia... Many of the banks will have colours, different colours on the banks, and that's positions where the numbers and pegs will move. So the rinks will move left and right to even the wear that, that way, as well as move north-south to east-west because of the amount of wear these greens in particular are getting. And they're more susceptible to wear when you are in dry conditions like we're experiencing at the moment. Yes, we got some rain yesterday, but if it's dry day after day after day, that's when that impact from the, the walking and the bowling will show some wear areas and which is the last thing the bowlers want that just creates 
inconsistency. So if the, if the surface is inconsistent, you quite often see inconsistent performance. So, Ireland, they know they've won. They've been absolutely brilliant. The Crumlin Bowling Club are watching on for Sarah Kelly. And g'day Shane, Shane Leonard. Good morning to you over there, mate. Shane's been back in Ireland for a couple of years now. Used to play at Warilla. Little nudge of the jack there from Rose Osher. And it goes through to that back bowl of hers. So they currently hold one Guernsey. Haven't scored a multiple since N7. And it's been pretty slim pickings in this second half of the match in which uh, Guernsey have only scored on two ends in the first half of the match. They're on fire. They'd scored in five of the nine. Seven of 18 now. It's been... One-way traffic to Ireland, Rainey and Kelly. I'm going to get their women's pairs competition off to the perfect start. Aaron Wilson has also won this morning. Christina Christick and Alan Ryan have won this morning. Or are they leading by 11 with three to play? So you think they should hold on? Ooh. I really, really, <laughs> really hope I haven't just mozzed them. <laughs> I did it at golf the other week playing with Aaron Sheriff. He, uh, he had about an eight-foot putt and it was looking good all the way. And it was about, I reckon, eight inches from the hole. And I said, great putt, Omar. And guess what? He missed. And uh, the look. Oh, he would. Aaron Sheriff, when he's angry, he stares daggers. Yeah, there's only one way to get Aaron upset, especially when he's skipping, and that's be in his way. It's a question I've been asked a few times over the years. How do you play with Aaron Sheriff a lot? It's very, very simple. He's a very humble and easygoing fella as Aaron Sheriff, but there's only one thing you just don't do when playing with Aaron. It's very simple. You just stay out of his way. <laughs> And, uh, How'd you go in golf? Did you beat him? No, I, th I reckon he would have got me that. He had a great day that day. Myself, Nathan Rice, and Aaron went for a game. And Nathan Rice goes okay too, doesn't very he? Very good golfer. As we see, Sarah Kelly, well, almost getting the maximum result there. Oh, uh, but uh, Port Rush, have... Port Rush is uh, on the on the radar for me. Val couldn't make it last year, but want to play at Royal Port Rush next oh, in the next couple of years. Very nice over there in Ireland. So, Lucy Beer. With the final bowl of the match. Very close. She's not far at all. Good way to finish. Very good way to finish for Lucy Beer. That is a three. And despite the loss, they get a little bit of a confidence boost. They're heading into their next match. But Ireland, after going down Barry Lester 6 0, they have rocketed home to take a 22 14 victory and kickstart their campaign in style here in the women's pairs competition at the World Bowls Championships of 2023. Yeah, all players performing pretty well. For me, the, the front end from Ashley there, just getting on top of Rose a fraction. Um, but yeah, look, a lot of learnings. It's only day one, morning one of the second week. So um, yeah, all players contributing well. But Sarah threw the probably middle section of that game for about five, six ends there, caught a bit of heat and um, really sort of dictated terms for a while there. But um, the the objective now, Val, is to quick debrief and get on with all the other games to come over the next three or four days. Plenty of matches still to come for Guernsey to continue to regroup and make their way through to the knockout stages if they can. But a brilliant win to Ireland's Ashley Rainey and Sarah Kelly, who overcome a 6-0 a deficit uh, to win 22-14 over Guernsey's Rose Ogier and Lucy Beer. Looking forward to the next session, however, it's Australia's fours team up against Malta. That's in just over an hour's time. And we'll be back with you. Like Bowls Australia's Facebook page and put your notifications on and you'll find out as soon as we do go live. Val Ferbo and Barry Lester with you at Club 
Club Musgrave throughout today. We'll catch you in just over an hour.